Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Timothy with Mana Rocks. Now, before I go and pick up this helmet, the host, just letting you guys know that it's been a week or two since my last video. I actually lost a little bit of footage transitioning to a new computer, and I have I'm using this computer as a trial run here to see how the sound works. So, any feedback on that would be nice. Whether you uh, the sound is different than previous videos or if it's just fine. Um, so yeah, we'll be doing that. I am in, looking into getting an actual microphone, though, so that I don't, don't have to use the microphone on my computer. But at any rate, we came here to see a Dominaria draft, so let's get into it. I really love Helm of the Host. Um, this is just a super powerful card, and it combos with a lot of different cards. You can put it on pretty much anything and steal a game as long as you're not too far behind. And overall, this pack is pretty good. There's a Tatiova, a Coldwater Snapper, a Pegasus Courser, Thalid Omnivore, and Sapper. These are all... Decent playable cards. Uh, Tatiova would probably be my pick otherwise. But I don't mind taking the gold card that goes in just about every deck. And I don't mind following up with Danitha. It seems that that pattern happens a lot. You pick up one of the rare equipments and then you get a second pick, Danitha. Um, Danitha is also just not even that bad with Helm of the Host. Um, even minus the aura or the equipment reduction part. Just making an extra Danitha every turn is pretty nice. Uh, the rest of the pack is a little bit weaker. D2 Journey Mage is a combo with Helm of the Host. Linger and Phantom's a fine card, and I like Sentinel if you have a couple of the sagas that really combo with it. But outside of that, not too much here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take Danitha. Even though I do think white is one of the weaker card or weaker colors. Ooh, and Arvad. All right, now Arvad is a combo with Helm of the Host in that you just get a bunch of other Arvads, but remember that Helm of the Host makes non-legendary copies, so they won't actually start pumping each other or anything crazy like that. There's also a Shiv and Fire in this pack, but there's just enough white and black that it's looking like if I pick up Arvad, I might get um, rewarded here. Plus, I'm starting off with three historic, three legendary cards, which might matter, so cards like Trapper go up in value. Um, I guess there's also Champion of the Flame, which fits that red-white aura equipment deck that I never see happen. Shiv and Fire is a signal, but I am going to pick up Arvad here and see what else just comes my way. Like, this pack, I guess green is probably the best color here. We have Gorger Grow from the Ashes. These are both good cards. Invoke the Divine is fine. Keldon Overseer is kind of blah, but not terrible either. And then there's Sarah Disciple, which fits with these. It's not bad if you end up with equipment. It's, it picks up Helm of the Host just fine. I think my pick is going to be Sarah Disciple here, even though I don't think the card is amazing by any stretch. I think if I were in a really um, tough setting, like a high-stakes tournament, I might take Grow from the Ashes or Bailoth Gorger and shift into green there, because I don't have to force myself into black here. Although... Fifth pick, Knight of Malice, is a huge sign, and these knights get way, way better when you're already in black-white and you can just feel them yourselves. Um, outside of that, Knight of New Benalia and Stronghold Confessor are both pretty mediocre cards, but might be the pick here otherwise. Guardians of Koilos is kind of whatever, but this is easy Knight of Malice. Really not even much to consider there. Ooh, Deathbloom Thalid as well. Well, Primeval's Glorious Rebirth, unfortunately, is not a card that is particularly playable so we're not going to take that i think it's just going to be death bloom thalid and that's just a fine card to put at any point in the curve and or at the three drop slot in pretty much any black deck seeing enough white coming around that i think white might still be reasonably open but it seems like black and green are the open colors which puts me in an okay spot uh the thalid is nice though these are good late black cards to pick up and they keep coming Lich's Mastery, unfortunately, not what I'm looking for, even though I do have two lifelinkers, so it has a little bit of potential, but I've never seen this card work, mostly because I haven't given it a try before, but maybe at some point before this format's over, I will. I could take another Disciple or a Fungal Infection. I think I'm just going to take Fungal Infection here. Um, you can usually get Disciples, but Fungal Infection does a good job at slowing down some of the more aggressive decks, which I've noticed since it's pretty much understood that... Um, Dominaria is a slower format that some people have adapted to that by just making these super all-in aggressive decks, and they kind of get there. Zalfrin Void, don't really see myself playing. Heal and Grace, I guess, is a fine sideboard card against people who have a bunch of burn and stuff like that. And then we're back to my original pack. Every single card I mentioned is gone, and then the Wind Grace Acolyte is also gone. Probably not going to play anything in this pack, but I guess I'll take up the Cabal Evangel. There isn't even, like, a good sideboard card here, really.
but for purposes of signal, and I'm going to just snipe the black card here. Adamant Will I do like, though. I will definitely take this card. Not be disappointed at all. Um, charge, this does not look like a charge deck. There often aren't charge decks. They're usually green-white, if anything. Demonic Vigor is playable, but we're probably not going to play it. It is playable. Oh, it also costs one generic mana less with Danatha. That's, that's a joke, by the way. All right, Cabal Evangel and some of the green cards. This was the pack that had the Grow from the Ashes and the Bayloth Gorger, I believe. Again, I just want to signal as much as I can, stay out of black. Black is not open. Uh, I can see playing Final Pardon in a very slow matchup. It's It's been playable before. <laughs> Rat Colony with Helm of the Host. Is that a combo? That might be a combo. I, I don't foresee myself playing Rat Colony. I've never put it in a deck, and hopefully I don't start now. But you never know. You never know. All right, so coming out of that pack, we've got a pretty good start here with these cards. These eight cards are all fairly playable, so let's just go ahead and dump the Rat Colony in the final part in for now. Looks like we're going to pick a pretty mediocre card in the next pack here. Might be... Do you have an Entrapper, Death Bloom Thalid, or Blood Tower Candle is what I'm looking at. I don't like Ace Third Glider in very much of any deck. Valduk... I mean, this pack overall was pretty weak. I could take Blood Tower Candle as a removal spell. Could also just take some on-theme creature here. So if that's what I'm doing, I have to ask myself which of these is better. Trapper does work with these three creatures. Thalid is probably just generically better than Trapper, unless you're all in on Historic. So I like taking the Thalid here, and it is the only black card in the pack, too. Granted, Trapper is the only white card in the pack, and then there's like six red cards and a bunch of unplayables. So, yeah, I'll pick up the Death Bloom Thalad. I think that's close between that and the Tracker. Ooh, all right. Um, <laughs> all right, so there's an Eviscerate and also a Yogmoth's Vile Offering, which this card is very, very good if you get the Legendaries to back it up. It's a Legendary Sorcery, so sometimes it's stuck in your hand. Uh, it's clearly just on effect alone better than Eviscerate, but Eviscerate you can always cast, whereas Yogmoth's Vile Offering is stuck in your hand sometimes. It doesn't help that like these cards are good enough that your opponent's going to aim removal at them right away, so I think it might be right to take Eviscerate, and it's possible I wheel the Offering, but not very likely. If there's another black player at the table, which it doesn't seem like there's more than one other, they might take the Phantom over the Vile Offering, and I might get it back here, but I'm going to take the more reliable removal spell over the trickier one. And that's fine, because we still got a bunch of stuff coming here. So now I'm between Sarah Angel, Settle the Score, and that's it. And it looks like I'm going to wheel 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to wheel something out of this pack. It's probably going to be like a Soul Salvage or a Sarah Disciple, but I think that's fine. So the question now is Sarah Angel or Settle the Score. After having picked up Eviscerate, which I think is just better than Settle the Score... Sarah Angel looks pretty good. It's just another beat or another way to win the game. Sarah Angel's clearly just very good. Some of the scores good removal. And a lot of times, you should prioritize removal over threats, but I think I am going to take Sarah Angel here over the settle. Um, now, coming off of that pack, we've got the all-green, all-blue pack. Sapperling Migration is just an easy best card in the pack, followed by Syncopate, I think. I don't think that's particularly arguable. Um, lots of unplayables here, so I'm between Feral, Abomination, and Joust and Lance. And I guess Joust and Lance is probably going to be my pick. I'm not in love with Feral, Abomination. I think it's more playable than some people give it credit for. It's not straight up unplayable, but it's definitely not a great card either. Joust and Lance gets you in there. Alright, so now we have Baird, Avon Sentry, Thalid, Invoke, Blood Tallow Candle, and not really considering Voltaic Servant or the second Joust and Lance. So, do I want a Flyer? Do I want this guy that kind of slows things down? If I really felt like I was going to get Yogmoth's Vile Offering back, I would just snap off Baird here. Or if I'd already taken it, I'd snap off Baird. Also, Baird does work with Helm of the Host pretty nicely. Makes it very difficult for your opponent to attack you. Um, is that just better than one of these other cards? Avon Sentry is pretty efficient. Is going to close out a game more often than Baird would. I think I'm actually just going to take Baird here. And really, I've just got my fingers crossed that I get that Legendary Sorcery back, which is probably asking a lot. Wow, Cloud Raider Sphinx. That is late, but I guess blue and green is flowing in this direction. It's going to be a Trapper here. I don't really love Joyra's Familiar unless half your deck is historic, and even then it's pretty low rate on the body, and Trapper's just fine. Not picking up the Rat Colony. Not going to happen, sorry. 
Uh, divest or Stronghold Confessor. Uh, I would actually kind of like to divest against these sorts of decks, especially once I've seen a Legendary Sorcerer. You can just start sniping Legendaries out of their hand with divest, but I still think I'm just going to pick up Stronghold Confessor here, which is realistically a 4-drop. I always refuse to play this on 1. Oh, wow. Um, so we're not picking up a card here, so the question really is, are we going to pick up a Time of Ice or a Cold Water Snapper? I'm probably not playing either, but I think Time of Ice is good if I find a way to splash it. I'm not going to force that, but I could see a, a world where Time of Ice and a Skitter and Surveyor get into my deck. Um, Warcry Phoenix, I guess I'll pick up the Glider. I really don't like the Glider. Shoot, we are not going to get our card back now, are we? Um... I've got two Cabal Evangels in the sideboard, and we're not playing those, so I guess I'll pick up the Void here. Yeah, all right, let's go and get this Soul Salvage, which I do like. All right, no luck on the Legendary Sorcery, unfortunately. That's a late Syncopate, too. Blue is definitely open in this direction. But I think we got a solid um, card here. And it's not like I passed up um, Vile Offering for a bad card. I did get an Eviscerate out of the deal. I would like a couple more removal spells, but I think Sarah Angel Oversettle the score is a defensible pick. I, I think it's pretty close. I might end up getting out of this draft one in a little bit more removal, and then I'll, you know, kick myself a little bit. But it's, again, I didn't pick this up over, or I didn't pass up on it for a bad card. I got a good card out of the deal. And uh, if I pick up maybe one or two more removal spells, I'd be pretty happy with this. Preferably like a Vicious Offering that I can get early on on the board. Um, these cards I'm less excited about, but they're not bad. Memorial to Folly's good. Dark Bargain's pretty good. I'm not going to play Dub or Elephant here, and I don't see a need for Yargle. I would probably pick up Yargle if I had gotten that Legendary Sorcery. Call the Calvary's not bad. Dark Bargain's not bad, and I do like Invoke, but I like trying to wheel it. Don't have anything I want to splash off the Clifftop Retreat, so the question is, boom, boom, or boom? I think I can get a Dark Bargain late, you usually do, so Call the Calvary or Memorial. Probably just going to be the Calvary here. This card stabilizes pretty well against a lot of people. Oh wow, Joyra. I can't cast that, that's for sure. There will not be any Joyras going on here. So what I'm looking at is Howlin' Golem and Pegasus Corsair. I really like Howlin' Golem in decks that have tons of removal spells, which this does not. So I think I'm just going to take the generically good Pegasus Corsair, pass up on the Golem, and pass up on a Joyra, unfortunately. Very good card, but looks like if I had gone into blue, I'd be getting rewarded quite a bit. Ooh, that is a cast down. That's also a Blessed Light, Unicorn's Fine, and another Time of Ice. Um, I actually think, again, at a GP, I might just take Blessed Light over Cast Down here. I think Cast Down is a little overrated. Still good, but overrated by a lot of people who think it's just like a slam dunk first pick, and I don't necessarily think that. Like, if I were Blue Black, I'm not entirely sure I would even take Cast Down over Time of Ice, but there are times where Cast Down will blank, and you just have to accept that, but that doesn't stop it from being a good card. Late Sap Herd, Oath of the Teferi is a do-nothing card here. Compass, we're not playing even with the Time of Ice in our sideboard, so I guess another Adamant Will or an Urza's Tome? Urza's Tome doesn't seem particularly good here. I like Adamant Will. Adamant Will just saves your creatures just fine. Ooh, Juggernaut's a good one. Don't mind the Juggernaut as opposed to, like, a Cabal Paladin or another Fungal Infection. Cabal Paladin doesn't seem too great here. Pretty good with Helm of the Host, I guess, but so is everything. Yeah, let's get Juggernaut in there. All right, wow, lots of sap herds. Not that I've really seen a black-green deck going around, or a fungus deck. I've seen, like, a bunch of these two cards specifically and a sap rolling migration, but that's about it. Linger and Phantom I see as being potentially decent in my deck. I do have ways to get it back. Deathbloom Thalid might just be more of what I want, though. Like, this is a late-game beater, but the Thalids do trade off very, very nicely. They help you grind out with Soul Salvage, too. So I think I'm just going to pick up another 3-drop that I don't mind trading off. And now we'll pick up probably a Divest over a Dub. Yeah, it's just going to be a Divest here. I don't actually hate Dub, but I'm not in love with it either. Shield of the Realm. I think this card's fine, but I actually just end up not really liking it or ever playing it. 
I'm going to pick up a Guardians in case I'm playing against like a Deep Freeze opponent who has a bunch of enchantments to put on our stuff. Now I'll take Dove, I suppose, over an Elephant. Elephant is not amazing by any means. All right, Sarah Disciple Wield. I will put that in my deck, especially with the Jousting Alliance. I'm not unhappy to have it. I'm not going to play the first glider, so I'm actually going to pick up a Radiate and Lightning here. It's possible I see some way to splash it. Uh, for that same reason, I'll just pick up another one. Sparring Construct. Uh, not really. Maybe if I had a Thalid Omnivore, I would consider that, but I don't, so I'm not going to. And yeah, so we ended up with three removal spells. Not a huge amount for black-white. Black-white tends to be the color pair that has access to the best removal spells, and we started on track with like a legendary type deck, but didn't really get there on it. So I think if I cut dub, this is probably what I'm playing. Kind of just a mid-rangey black-white deck. We're looking to... Uh, Win with, like, Sarah Angel, Pegasus Courser, and maybe just grind our opponent out. Helm of the Host being our bomb card, so to speak. Anything else I'm just not super excited about? Nah, the rest of the deck actually seems just fine. Like, this is not a bad curve. It's got some, I guess, two drops here. I would have loved a Quende, since I have Joust and Lance, Double Sarah Disciple. But, alas, you can't have everything, so. Color Sort here. Yeah, it's about even. Sure, we have more white cards, and they're double white, so I'm going to go 9-8, 9-8 like that, and we'll see if this deck can get there. Yep, that looks perfect. Not splashing for anything, not playing the Time of Ice, not playing the Rat Colony, and our sideboard's looking a little bit light. We have potentially a couple like really niche sideboard cards against certain situations, against Burn, or against Legendaries, or against... Um, Deep Freeze specifically. I do like this card against Deep Freeze, but it's very situational. But anyway, we ended up in black-white. One of my favorite color combinations when you get it, but this looks like a okay deck, and we'll see if we can pull out the trophy with it. I've been doing two ones very, very often lately, so we're aiming for that 3-0. But anyway, my name's Timothy with Mana Rocks. Thanks for joining me, and give me any feedback about the sound, whether it's uh, better or worse, or whatever your opinion is. Just let me know in the comments below how you feel about the recording. And uh, I'll see y'all in the matches. Thanks for watching. All right, we're here for match one. Um, our hand is not amazing. Like, this is one of those times where it looks like Confessor might come out on turn one. I am on the draw, so I think I'm going to keep, but not having to play till turn four is pretty pretty poor here. Uh, all right, well, against the Dauntless Bodyguard, I am going to run out Stronghold Confessor. And I am playing on a new computer, so hopefully... Um, there aren't any stops I'm forgetting about that I have to reset. Apparently, if you read that, yeah, it doesn't remember based on your profile, just on the computer, but whatever. Uh, I'm only running this out because it does block their 2-1, and since I'm not doing anything for a while, um, it seems like that's probably what I want to do. So, no, nope. drop is a nice follow-up. All right, I do actually like the Death Bloom Thalid, but we're just going to go and pass for now. Hopefully I get to go Thalid next turn and just... Uh, Oh, land, and then I start casting the rest of the spells in my hand. Juggernaut looking bad against a white deck. Trapper looking pretty decent. And, alright, well, if we don't draw lands, drawing a bunch of Thalids is not necessarily the worst thing in the world either. So opponent on an aggressive white deck, probably missing a second color, but we'll see. Maybe not. I have played against a mono white deck before at a GP. Granted, they had a history banalia and it was team sealed. Ooh, all right, Quende. That will very likely get eviscerated if uh, I draw my land. Until then, I'll take three. And hit a fourth land, please. Nice. All right, so do I just eviscerate Quende now? Probably, right? I mean, I could get another creature on board first. Like, I could play a Baird, which taxes my opponent a little bit if they want to get fancy. 
although I'm not blocking Quende. Maybe they go for an aura on it. I'm actually just going to get bared down, I think. They just give my opponent to, uh, a chance to untap and have, like, maybe an adamant will or something like that, but they have to use mana to attack me anyway. I'm probably going to cast, like, if they want to cast a historic spell beforehand, they got to keep in mind that they got to use a little bit of mana to get in. Ooh, another trapper, huh? So, no attack is nice. Double trapper is something, though. Ooh, I like having the Adamant Will as well, although it's a little unfortunate. Like, if I just kill Quende here, they cast a Historic Spell, they go tap, tap. I am taking a lot, so maybe I just put more creatures on board here. I uh, don't really love the Helm of the Host, because I'm not guaranteed to draw a fifth land next turn. So, I guess Thalid Boy is coming down. Yeah. Yeah. I guess one reason to play maybe like, nah, we don't really want to play Juggernaut. Not into a, this board. Since they can just take five and it leaves me down a blocker. Alright, so we're playing the Mirror Match. Call the Cavalry, that's a nice one. Alright, Baird I think is going to be decent in this game. Fifth mana is nice. I would like to save Adamant Will for a turn where I have Helm of the Host too, so I do think I'm going to just... What happens if I eviscerate Quende and then they play a historic spell, they tap this and this, they get in for quite a bit. But I still think I just get rid of Quende here, as opposed to playing, say, Juggernaut. Although if I play Helm of the Host and I get to equip on Baird next turn, that's pretty good too. Granted, I'd, like I said, I'd like to keep Adamant Will up the turn I cast that so that I'm doing something relevant that turn as well. So I think I am just going to kill this and just pass it back. Opponent is on one card here. But they're in decent shape. Just They need to draw Historic Spells. If they ever cast two Historic Spells, they get to just swing out. They currently have um, oh, 12 damage on board, which is pretty brutal. Oh, that's a Joustin Lance. Alright. Let's see if they go for a big swing here. They can't attack with everything, actually, especially if they equip. Which it looks like... Yeah, that makes sense. Attack with the 4-1. I'm just going to take that hit. Uh, I could double block, actually, and trade Baird off for it. Nah. I like just keeping Adamant Will up against that. So land, please. Good. So now I can go Helm of the Host and just keep up Adamant Will as backup. Even let me eat a first striker, assuming I don't get blown out or anything like that. Does this still this still triggers if it's not equipped? It's kind of weird. Feels like it probably shouldn't trigger if it's not equipped. So I'm gonna let him attack, and then before damage, I'm probably just gonna adamant will up a death bloom thalid. And the reason to do it on Death Bloom Thout is if they have a removal spell, I want them to do it on a creature that I'm fine losing. Also, Gideon's Reproach is another consideration. Although maybe, that's eh, still probably just right. If they kill Stronghold Confessor, I'm fine with it. And then question is, where does Helm of the Host go? Could put it on Baird. Start making a bunch of Bairds, make it really hard for them to attack. Could put it on Death Bloom Thalids, because those get to block forever. Yeah, let's do that. So now, the more Bairds we make, the more mana they have to attack with each creature. So currently they're on the plan of probably just attacking with one creature per turn. 
I can take probably a hit. And we get to make another Baird every turn. So this comes very difficult for the opponent to attack in at some point. I am going to just take this hit, I believe. Ooh, Knight of Grace is good. Ooh, Cast Down is a nice option here too. So now I can afford to just sit back for a little while. Juggernaut's going to be pretty bad against this Knight of Grace, which Cast Down does not actually deal with. So yeah, we're going to see the power of um, Helmet the Host this game. If our opponent just doesn't draw an answer, we're going to make it so that we have so many Bairds on board, our opponent just can't even attack us. Like, right now, they could attack with a creature, but then they can't cast a spell. Um, I am going to block with this Confessor. Ooh, Knight of Malice is good. Could make a bunch of Knight of Malices here instead of Bairds, but... I'm fine just making more Bairds. Boom, boom. Alright, so it costs four to attack me. Now I can go for, like, some double blocks in front of this knight. Now I'm at the point where I'm fine just eating my opponent's creatures if they want to block. Triumph of Gerard. Plus one, plus one counter on their biggest creature. Plus they get to tap two creatures down. That's pretty sweet. They still only get to attack with one thing this turn. It does make me want to keep cast down until they get to a turn where um, they're popping the Triumph, though. So I assume they're still going to attack with that Knight. which case I'll block with, I suppose, two things, right? Five power first striker. I could just put Knight of Great, Knight of Malice in front of it. It just trades off. Ooh, this thing could be a problem with that Triumph, though. All right, so let's go. Let's see, if I put a Baird and a Deathbloom Thout in front of it, they first strike off one of them. They kill, like, a Baird. But they don't have enough to kill the other one, so let me just double check that. They do, they have five, so they first strike off this. Uh, no, they could first strike off the Death Bloom Thalid, so that won't work. And I don't want to double block with Bairds. That wouldn't work either. So why don't we just trade Knight of Malice here, I suppose. And now I think it's at the point where I can start attacking with my Bairds. since uh, they all trade for my opponent's creatures. They all have Vigilance too. I will not attack with the uh, original Baird. Or maybe I should. I can just re-equip. Um, yeah. Leave the Deathbloom Thalids on defense here. This is kind of absurd. Oh, do I cast down one of these now? Or do I save cast down? No, this just makes me re-equip. Let's just kill one trapper, deal eight to our opponent, re-equip Helm of the Host, I suppose. And we'll pass back. So my one worry is that they equip Knight of Grace with Joustin Lance, and then they have a way to pump it and just swing over me, but I might be able to just kill my opponent on their turn. Especially if they attack this turn, which I don't think they will, but they might. Ooh, red mana. Keep in mind, my opponent was using a lot of mana to get attacks in there, so... Fiery Intervention. Oh, on the Helm of the Host. You jerk. That's fine. I think the damage is done there. They can't attack me this turn. Alright, let's see. So, if I cast down 
D Avenant Trapper, and then I attack with everything. They go block, block. They take 8, 9, 10, 11. Still not lethal. I could attack with all the Baird still, play Pegasus Courser plus Juggernaut, something along those lines. I, it's probably just right to attack with everything and let them eat one of my Bairds. And then they have like a way to give plus two, plus two. They probably kill me, but... This seems fine. I'm going to play Pegasus Courser and keep up cast down. That way I can block this knight in case something goes terribly wrong. They do get to eat one of my Bairds here. They get to trade for a Thalid and probably, yeah. So they take six, seven, eight, nine down to three. They lose two of their creatures, but they get that lifelink hidden. Pretty clutch. Does this give Vigilance? First Strike, Fly, and Lifelink. It doesn't. So, boom, ba boom. And I will say good luck, opponent. Let's see what you got. This is going to be a 4 3 with a lifelink flying. And first strike it already had. Plus, Joustin Lance can make it 6. It might not even be able to attack me, though. Alright, Helm of the Host did work there. Let's see what we've got. Not much, right? I guess Divest is usually just decent against opponents like this. They have artifacts, they have creatures, stuff like that. Dub doesn't seem terrible either, but not great when they have, like, Fiery Intervention in their deck. Healing Grace is not bad. It's a it's an okay combat trick. Um, helps get around First Strike or stuff like that. They have Trappers and everything, though, so I think I'm just going to bring in a Divest since they're primarily just a creature deck. Maybe bring out something a little uh, defensive. And Juggernaut does not seem great in this matchup, especially against which I'm gonna call it. So yeah, let's go ahead and cut the Juggernaut. Especially when I'm going to be on the draw. Um, Juggernaut is not the card you want to be playing on turn 4 when your opponent is tapping creatures down and forcing in big attacks. Uh, Knight of Malice might make this good enough to keep. Plus I'm on the draw, so I have a chance of just hitting a planes and getting there anyway. Ooh, Isolated Chapel. That's fancy right there. Uh, I'm actually not going to play Confessor on turn 1 this time. Show me the 2-drop. <laughs> sure. Planes? Ooh. Alright. Well, if I don't draw a land, I can't do anything anyway, so... Not too worried about it. Let's see if they have a black or red removal spell for this knight. If not, do I attack? Or do I block? Maybe. I have a pump spell. Ooh, that's sick, actually. Alright, that does let me cast another creature here. Also means I can eviscerate the Black Knight at some point. If I draw a fourth land, of course. This is a combo right here. These knights are very good. No attack. Alright, so now do we attack? Or do we play Call of the Calvary? A Kicked Stronghold Confessor? These are all fine options. I think my opponent's fine just holding off for now. Plus I'd like to keep Eviscerate if I can, so let's go Call the Calvary. And I guess I'm just passing back. I could just offer a trade for a knight here. It can't get Gideon's Reproached. The worst they can have is a pump spell, and then they trade the pump spell for the knight. Their creatures do attack into mine pretty well, though. Oh, they have an Arvad? Well, guess what? I have an Arvad, too, if I can cast it. Which I can. So here, I might go Divest plus Pegasus Courser just to see what's going on in their hand. They can't really attack with Arvad into this knight, plus this gives me... An idea of what's going on, so we'll see. Blood Tower Candle, they have Fiery Intervention, Gideon's Reproach. Good to know. And the candle is gone as well, so those are two cards I'm not super worried about at the moment. So what am I hoping for here? My opponent did not draw red, I guess. 
Helm of the Host would be fine. They probably only have one or two red sources in their deck. Ooh, Fungal Infection actually does a little bit here. Not a lot, just a little bit. What happens if I Eviscerate? Or I guess if I attack Pegasus Courser, they Gideon's Reproach it, right? I do get that hidden, but I lose my Courser. I'm just going to play the Menace dude, I think. Um, I just make him use Gideon's Reproach on Pegasus Courser? Is that worth it? Or maybe I should wait until I have an Adamant Will. I have two in my deck. Seems like building out the board here is just fine. They drew a non-creature, non-land, I think. They might have played a land if they had one. Or if they had drawn one, so... Not sure what they have. Ooh, Black Blade Reforge. That is an incredibly good card. That's going to go on Arvad, I assume. Just boom, boom, boom. Yeah. That's an 8-8 right there. Just take that hit. Um, yeah, we're going to take it. Doesn't feel good, especially since they gain 8 off of it. But we're not going to multi-block. Sarah Disciple. So now we go Eviscerate here. They don't quite have enough mana to put that on something else. And now we get a little bit of an attack in. We go here and I suppose just here. This is definitely coming in. What's the other card coming in? Yeah, let's just send this guy in the air. Alright, Black Blade Reforge. That was their draw for the turn, too, so we don't know much else about their hand. At this point, they would play lands out because they want to re-equip that. So if they don't play a land, that means they're drawing non-land spells. It's kind of weird. Alright, that's an Adamant Will. So now I might just go for, like, um, Courser, like, just keep getting in there with these guys. Leaving the Death Bloom Thalid on defense, because that's the one I'm most likely to want to uh, block with if it comes to chump blocking. So now we try to save this. See if they have some other trick. They do not. It's kind of awkward that Fungal Infection doesn't stop their first striker from killing any of my creatures mid-combat. Alright, so they have Fiery Intervention plus three other cards, and none of them seem to be lands. Or creatures. Or six drops, maybe? What does this do? It's a 4-4. Four, four. I do have a clock going in the air now, which is nice. Also, I'm not worried about Guardian at all. Planes is a decent draw. Might be right. I don't think Arved's doing much this game, so it might be right to just play Sarah Disciple and just get a little bit more of a clock going here. Although Arvad picking up Pegasus Courser is nice too, so let's actually do that. That that's, that seems better. Just means I don't get to keep up Fungal Infection, but whatever, right? Yep. Alright, back to you opponent. Question is, if they draw red, what do they fiery intervention? Probably the Courser. Since Arvad can't swing through these knights anyway. I mean, the real question from my perspective is, what do they have in hand if they're not playing creatures or lands? They just drew a trapper, I assume. Plus a Dowston Lance. Oh, so they were keeping that in hand for some, some sort of trigger, I suppose? If they attack with Guardians, what do we do? Probably just take four. I'm not looking to block at this point, especially when they have all this equipment. I might need blockers later on. I'm not trying to trade two for one for this thing. Okay, okay. That does block these things. Um, oh, it's also going to be plus two, plus two. That's pretty beefy. So yeah, I'm going to play bear plus cold up fungal infection. And I'm going to start gaining a little bit of life back. So opponent's got three turns left here. 
They're at 10. I could just play Sarah Disciple, though. And then... Clock them. Now, let's play Baird. Because then if they want to equip, it's less likely they can do other stuff, too. Yeah, I like Baird here. Especially it being a 4-6. I mean, Joust and Lance is, like, fine here, but not fantastic. Another Joust and Lance? Oh, no, they're equipping to Guardians. All right. I will pump this one with the Deathbloom Thalad, I suppose. Keeps my number of blockers the same. Not too worried about much else. Baird can even... No, Baird can't attack because they have two first strikers on defense. Uh, sure. Actually, Baird could attack here, and if they want to go block, block, then I go Fungal Infection, your Knight, and that just gets them. That's assuming they don't have, like, Blessing of Bells and Lock. Can I just attack with everything and kill them, though? They're at Virtual 6... They go block, block, block. They take three. Technically, I could kill them if they have nothing here. I don't see a need to go all in there, but I do think I like the attack with Baird. I highly doubt they have a one-mana spell here, but we're going to do it. There's not a lot that goes wrong with it. Could also just hit them for five in the air. Actually, let's just two-turn clock them, I suppose. And then next turn, I can just alpha swing if something goes terribly wrong. I can't imagine my opponent can kill me from this position. They're at five. All right, thanks for thanks for letting me know. All the new updates on my computer. So yeah, I wonder wonder what my opponent had there. Maybe more red cards. Maybe Fire Intervention was not the only red card, like Tiana or Valduk or something. I don't know. But yeah, our black-white deck vested the other black-white deck. Let's see if it can do it with the other two decks. All right, see you all in match two. All right, we won the die roll this time for match two. A little bit of a risky keep for the play, but if I draw any land, I'm doing all right. And Fungal Infection helps a little bit in case I'm against an aggro start. So I think this is a fine keep. Opponents mulling down to five. And let's see what the scry looks like. Nidor. Scry to the bottom. So mold to five, scry to the bottom, but they are on the draw. I'm not going to play Stronghold Confessor, which I feel like I have to say every game. You just, I mentioned it before, a 1-1 one, one Menace drops off so heavily in the late game, and a 3-3 three, three Menace is actually playable. So, ooh, I like that my opponent is playing a land war else here while I have a Fungal Infection. That seems nice. And look, I get one damage in anyway. All right, now I just need to draw a Plains, and we'll have an actual decent opener here. Now my opponent could crawl back in this game if I just draw spells I can't cast, and they have spells they can cast. I say crawl back in the game like they're already super far behind, but, I mean, they've got pretty keepable five, it looks like. Perfect. So what do we play first? Probably the Trapper over the Thalid, since that means if I draw like another Plains, I can cast Baird and just tap down creatures. Either one pushes through this 1-3, and either one I'm fine trading off for a 3-drop here, so we'll see. Alright, Swamp off the top's not bad, it means I get Sarah Angel with another Plains. Um, I am going to cast Stronghold Confessor this turn, so we'll see what happens on the attack. Not with that, though. All right. Let's hear your confession, kid. 3-3 three, three Menace seems pretty good here, too. Got a 4-drop. We've got a Thalid Omnivore. All right. That card is good. Ooh, Joust and Lance was pretty good draw, too, so I can go um, just tap down your Thalid, I suppose. Yeah, let's just tap down the Thalid. Or I could tap this and force a trade, but nah. 
This probably gets me in six damage. Plus Joustin Lance on Stronghold Confessor is pretty beefy next turn. Costs three to equip. My opponent is not just dead in the water. Thelid Omnivore can stabilize very quickly if you have a bunch of Saffrolling cards to go with it. They are on three cards, though. And pretty behind on board with me having the Joust in Alliance. Bayloth Gorger is a nice one. Alright, so here I could go Sarah Angel, which would be good. Or I could go Baird. Tap down Bayloth, attack with these two. Kind of like just playing the Sarah Angel here. Just passing the turn. Forces them to deal with the threat or get a flyer, plus Jousting Lance can go on that and threaten a two-turn clock if they have nothing. If they attack with anything at all, I'm just straight up not blocking. But for a Mold of 5 and me killing their Land of Worlds, plus the Eviscerate, my opponents had a very good Mold of 5. Don't think they're in a position where they can really attack, though. So, what's the deal here? Do I equip Jousting Lance? I suppose I could equip Jousting Lance to the Trapper. Or I could just go Thalid plus equip this turn. Um, I guess if I put it on the Confessor... Yeah, let's just do this. That way... No, because then they can go, like, block, block. That's not a very good block for us at all. So we're going to go... Um, Thalid plus equip Joust and Lance to the Confessor. I suppose I could also put Joustin Lance on the Avenant Trapper and just trade it off for one of these big boys. That seems fine by me. Okay. Something is going on right now. Mm, opponent is... Uh thinking about something, or... I don't know. There we go. Uh, yeah, let's do that. The only problem there is I lose out on being able to tap a creature, but I think that's fine. If this just trades off for a creature, I'd be tapping anyways. Let's go ahead and get in there. Um, they will actually no. They would have to block with specifically both these creatures. Oh, they could just take five. That's fine too. All right, let's see what the follow up is. Might have them dead next turn. We'll see. Taking five there was not what I expected, but I kind of get it. All right, opponent says go. So now we can go cast bear, tap down your Thalid Omnivore, attack with probably everything. Omnivore has to eat other creatures to get big, though. So let's go, at the very least, we're going to cast bear, tap down Omnivore, And then if I equip this here, actually they would have to double block already. What could they have here? Spore Swarm? Spore Swarm would be pretty good. I could just not be risky. Just attack with this or put a, the Joust Alliance on the Stronghold Confessor and force a double block. They could have Vicious Offering too, which would be just fine. Let's go ahead and move this here, I suppose. I'm anticipating Spore Swarm or Vicious Offering. They would have to kick Vicious Offering. Gift of Growth would work too, I suppose. I just I don't want to go for the huge swing out here, and then they have a Vicious Offering, and then I'm just losing a couple creatures for no particular reason. At least this way, it forces them to do something, whether it's a removal spell or a double block. 
I'm not going to play around a combat trick here. Just going to put that first and see what they have. All right, they have something. Uh, Gift of Growth kicks. All right, so they did have Gift of Growth. Could have played around that by putting the sandwich first, but and then I would have. They they probably would have just let that happen and kept their Gift of Growth. So now we're pretty equal, actually. I would say. Got them very close to dead, but they're also fine. So I'm going to boot up the one creature I'm fine losing here and just get in there again and then play another Thalad and boot that up next turn. Like, again, this forces a block or an action of some sort, even if it's just pumping with Skin Witch. If they're on all tricks... Oh, they had Sports Swarm, too. So, yeah, they could just be on all tricks here, which is super annoying. Opponent's... Mold of five has been insanely good. Their deck seems good too, though. Now the question is, how do you block? Also, keep in mind that that Thalid Omnivore really messes things up with the life gain. So this block makes sense because they can sack it to gain two life. And now we're actually in trouble, I think. Omnivore is that good. Not in trouble of dying necessarily, but going to have trouble killing the opponent. Since those attacks for 5 don't really work anymore with this Omnivore out. Might get to the point where I just have to start throwing creatures away to try and get in damage. We lost our Sarah Angel already. Um, something like Soul Salvage would be fantastic. I mean, Eviscerate or Cast Down for the Omnivore would obviously be very good. Arvad would even be alright, I suppose. Pegasus Courser would be nice. Yeah, my opponent's got a very high quality deck here. The Gift of Growth is just a fine playable card. Mammoth Spider. Alright, well there goes that plan. Alright, now Drawing Lands is not good. So, what do I do here? If I attack, what does this block look like? I mean, if, it, if they lose any of these three creatures, I'm happy with it. So I think I'm just going to make that attack still. I'm fine trading this off for any of the three middle creatures, and they don't have enough little creatures to just do that block. Sure, actually. That's fine. I'll go ahead and take out Mammoth Spider here. Seems pretty okay with me. Yeah, I even get paid back a Saproling here. Going to clip up the other one. And pass. Mammoth Spider just means if I do draw Pegasus Quartzer, I have a, an out to victory here. Wind Grace Acolyte. Oh, opponent has effectively gained five extra life this game. Millen Thorn Elemental, Dark Bargain, Dread Shade. Wow. Opponent's deck is good. All the cavalry is not terrible here. So I could do the same thing with the Thalid. They only have one mana up. So I suppose I will do that. They're probably going to do block with the Sapperling. Sack it. Or they could throw Bailoth under the bus here. It's all the way up to 12. I have a lot of ways to get out of this situation. But I think my opponent's actually fairly far ahead here. Doesn't look like it, but they are. At least if they have to keep eating these well, not dealing extra damage, I'm happy with it. We're going to start getting hit in the air, too, I think. Opponents gained enough life that they don't have to worry about me alpha striking them. Helm of the Host would be amazing. Alright, what I do need my opponent to do is draw some amount of lands and not just more spells. Ooh, cast down's fantastic. So now, um, now I think I can afford to do something a little crazy, but probably not going to do that. I think we're still going to just attack with the Thalid. And try to get a two for one out of the opponent here. Really just need to get the Bayloth off board, I think. Well, no, has to be the Omnivore, right? 
block with a sapling, blah, 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 yada, yada, et cetera, et cetera. Or they could just take it at this point, too. Ooh, I like this. All right, so the onus is on my opponent to do something here. Are they going to just sack two creatures? All right, let's let that resolve. They're going to sack the Skin Witch as well. All right, and now we cast down. I get to save my guy, and now we probably can Alpha Swing at him. Maybe not. Oh, they just scooped to that. Nice. They weren't actually dead. They gained enough life to maybe crawl back in, but their last card's probably a land. So, whoo, that went bad for a while. Against a black-green deck, a pretty good black-green deck, too. Um, again, Divest is usually just decent here. I don't really want Juggernaut against a bunch of Sapperlings. Juggernaut just might not be... Might not be a great card, guys. They have a 3-2 Flyer. Yeah, I guess these are fine. What else? They have Gift of Growth. Eviscerate. Things I can't really combat against anyway. I guess Demonic Vigor is a spell I can put in my deck. But... That went well enough that I don't have to change things up too much. Could put Final Parting in. Go get Helm of the Host and ditch, I don't know, something to the graveyard. I have Soul Salvage. I don't think I have that Phantom. What is it, the Lingering Phantom? Or Phantasm, maybe? Who knows? All right, so on the draw this time, ah, yes, we have a Danitha, don't we? I do like this hand. We'll see if it's good enough against our opponent's deck. They are scra or Mulligan and again, down to six, but they're on the play this time. Let's see if their uh, six land is just as insane as last time, even after I killed Land of War Elves. You kill a turn one Land of War Elves, it feels so great, especially when it's a Fungal Infection. I guess I should have uh, probably threatened the Fungal Infection here with a Swamp. But alas, I did not. Knight of Malice. Everybody's going to have that, huh? Well, I will offer you a Knight of Malice for a Knight of Malice, I suppose. If they attack, probably block. If they want to use Gift of Growth, then sure. Maybe not. Or they could just kill it, I suppose, if they have a way to do so. Vicious Offering. All right, that's fair. Knight is going to get a lot of damage on me, but I would rather them use Vicious Offering on my little creatures earlier on. Oh, no, 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 no. Turn off auto yields. All right, I skipped my turn. Let's see how badly that hurts us. Let's not F6 again. Just giving my opponent a free draw step. They're going to play like a Bayloth Gorcher, and then I'm going to lose Omnivore. Well, now I feel pretty awful about it, but what are you going to do? What we are going to do is play Danitha here. And hope it survives so we can Adamant Will plus block or something like that. We'll see. We'll, we, we, made, we made a mistake, but we got to play through it. I'll F6 now because I can't actually do anything. But we'll see. Looks like pre-combat. That was an Ancient Animus. All right. Man. I messed up bad. All right, so now what do we do? Can't play a creature and hold up Adamant Will, so I like the idea of just playing Call the Calvary here, I suppose. Could play a Deathbloom Thalid because it offers to trade for Omnivore. And then next lance I can go, or next turn I can go like Joustin Lance plus Adamant Will, or I guess I can go Thalid plus Adamant Will. So, yeah, let's go... If that's the case, don't we just play Call the Calvary? Yeah, just take another hit off the opponent. All right, we're, we're not in too bad shape here. Our opponent is on one card left, but we are pumping their creatures for them, and we made a pretty pretty bad mistake of just missing a land drop and giving our opponent a free turn to play whatever. Mammoth Spider is a nice one. No attack when Knight of Grace. I guess, yeah, that doesn't actually work. So let's go a Thalid and pass the turn. 
holding up Adamant Will for real this time. I would have loved to hold up Adamant Will for Danatha because Danatha would let me cast that Jousting Lance for one. But sometimes you click a button you shouldn't be clicking. Adamant Spider is pretty beefy here. If they attack with it, I'm probably double blocking with these two. I'm also fine with my opponent not doing anything. So now I'm going to go... Sarah Disciple just doesn't look particularly good against uh, the Mammoth Spider. And I could play out another card here, but I'm going to hold up Adamant Will. Especially since I can play like Sarah Disciple, Austin Lance, and Adamant Will next turn. Justin Lance was probably better to get on board. It does let me start attacking with these. Trade with a knight or just eat these other creatures. You have to be careful of Sports Worm, too. Ah, uh, Baird, huh? I think we can hold tight on that one for a second. So let's go boom, boom. Boom, boom. And we'll just pass the turn after that. All right. I mean, we're pretty stable against the opponent, but there's a chance, like, if, if I play Danatha that turn, I skip my turn, and they Ancient Animus, like, that'd be fine. Actually, they wouldn't be able to. I'd be able to protect it. Thorn Elemental. That's a good one. Plains is not bad either. So what happens if we Justin Lance up a creature here? Let's go. And then pass. I assume they're actually going to try to trade Thorn Elemental for uh, a bunch of creatures here, would be my guess, but I'm not 100% sure. Memorial, huh? Memorial's good. I wish I had a Memorial in my deck, but did not take the black one. No attack with Thorn Elemental. Interesting. Ooh, Pixis Corsair is nice. Trying to mask that I have this Adamant Will, but it's not working out with the mana on the Joust and Lance and whatnot. Um, so I'm actually just going to play Pegasus Courser and pass. Also, my opponent could just sniff out the Adamant Will if I'm not equipped. <coughs> Excuse me. Equipping the Joust and Lance. <coughs> Crack the Memorial. Ooh, Eviscerate Pegasus Courser. I think I just let that happen. Not getting through anyway. And I'd rather save Adamant Will to deal with this thing if it attacks. Ooh, that one's even better. Alright, now I have an answer for that one, you jerk. Plus, this does carry Joust and Lance and get over that Mammoth, so... Alright, now I think we're in good shape. Because Adamant Will is going to protect Sarah Angel from pretty much anything my opponent could have in these colors. In fact, I think it protects from literally everything. I guess not settle the score, but it saves it from Eviscerate, it saves it from Vicious Offering, Kicked or No. Um, it saves it from Ancient Animus and might even get me value off of it. They're going to crack Memorial now. So they could put a creature in their hand. I really like the green memorial. Very good. Baloth Gorger, which they're one mana away from kicking. That is a potential problem. Might just play it out, though. Is it time to attack with Thorn Elemental yet? They have to pay one for that as well. Huh. So if I trade off a couple creatures here, like if I go one, two, three, trade these three creatures off, get a bunch of saplings, it's not great for me. Could also go. I could block with Sarah Angel and do the Adamant Will thing, 
That gets blown out by Vicious Offering, which I don't think they have. But other than that, it doesn't get blown out by very much. I guess Ancient Animus too. Um, so let's just say, hypothetically, boom, boom, and shaboom. They would be able to kill two creatures here. Baird plus Deathbloom Thalid, I suppose. Maybe I'm just fine with the knight dying. Three, four, five, six, seven. Bear just seems good against this knight here. I guess so does Sarah Angel if I can protect it, right? Yeah, bear doesn't seem necessary here. So let's do this. These are these are my most expendable creatures. I guess that doesn't actually kill it, so <laughs> there. This is this is gonna be the block. Get in there. And then I'm probably going to lose Baird plus... Oh my god. I Please don't... I, I click block... There we go. Alright, locking it in. I assume I'm going to lose Baird plus the Deathbloom Thalid now. I highly doubt they hit me for 7. That doesn't seem very likely at all. And I just have to not die to their ground forces, basically. Uh, okay, they're going to choose to get rid of a knight instead of the Deathbloom Thalid, so I don't get value. That seems wrong, though, because my sapling's not really relevant here. Yeah, alright, so they made the trade. I think I would have gotten rid of the 3-2, because it's something that can block their Omnivore and double blocks a little bit better with the knight on their mammoth spider, but I don't know what they have in hand. I mean, I know they have a Baloth Gorger. Oh, another mammoth spider. That's pretty juicy. Still not enough to block this uh, Sarah Angel with a Joustin Lance on it, though. Which is exactly what we're going to do. They could double block, but they'll lose one before damage, so I don't think they can afford to do that. Play another Sarah Disciple and pass. So we know they have Gorger, plus they have two more cards. Looks like they just wanted to wait on a land there, make a creature I had to block every turn or something like that. Yeah, alright. This is fine for now. Could be a threat later on. All right, we'll go ahead and just keep that in the hand, I suppose. Thankfully, I do have a bunch of chump blockers, thanks to these Thalids. They can't get too risky. Like, they can send the Omnivore in, but they're going to get blown out. Sarah Angel's going to eat whichever other creature attacks me that's not this Gorger. And this isn't a threat they can ignore forever. Like, technically, they're dead next turn if they don't block. They don't know that. I have two Adamant Wills in my deck. A second Adamant Will would actually be okay. Ooh, what is this? Oh, a Skin Witch. That's actually super good, isn't it? Um, I guess I'll cast this now on... It doesn't really matter what I put it on. This can already block. Let's just make another thing that can block here. Yeah, Skin Witch is a good one. Alright, game is not over yet. Guess I wasn't thinking about Skin Witch. I might have just played out the Swamp. Not that I really need it, though. Alright, let's see. Probably no attack, considering I have the indestructible thing, but we'll see. They could get a little frisky here. Draw something relevant. That is relevant. So now I think what I'm going to do is jam with Sarah Angel. They're probably going to block with a spider now. Now they're... 
there. They're not feeling it. So now I'm going to go eviscerate one of your spiders. I should probably eviscerate the Thalid Omnivore. Block, block, block. Yeah, I can kill him next turn. I'm going to eviscerate the Omnivore because that's the one creature that could get him back in if they gain life and such. Um, but as it is, if they have nothing next turn, and I can put Jousting Lance on a Sarah Disciple, and I can actually... No, I can't swing lethal. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. All right. So this is the... You got it, buddy. Just make sure we do blocks for real. Um, I might not even block with Terra Disciple if I don't have to. So let's just do some optimal blocking. Some some Chumperinos. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not going to run into Gift of Growth with my Sarah Disciple. It doesn't actually matter. If they have Gift of Growth on a Spider, then yeah, that's pretty good. No, I'm not going to block with Sarah Disciple, or Sarah Angel. I'm just trying to see how I can get as much value as possible. Without losing too many creatures here. So three, four, five, six. Yeah, I'm just gonna do this. Keep my flyers around. I get some chump blockers back if this goes really bad. Gift of growth, I think, is the only thing they could have here. That okay, they didn't have it because it untaps a spider. They could save themselves, but then the Sarah disciples kill. Them. But cool, we took that down. This is probably a bad matchup for us, but. Yeah, all right. Um, I'm, I'm just happy we won that despite skipping a turn, so I think our deck's pretty good. Let's see if we can uh, take it down in the finals. See you there. All right, we are in the finals here. I am on the play, and I think this is a keepable hand. Not a lot of action going on if Sarah Disciple dies. It's unfortunate, but Fungal Infection, like I said, is good when you're on a fairly uh, weak hand. We're against Corel here. We're going to lead off with the Swamp and just pass, and... For now, I'd like to just draw lands and ballads, but we'll see. Try our best not to skip a turn here. Uh, here comes the Lava Runner. Alright, that's not a bad draw. I am going to lead off with Sarah Disciple here, instead of trying to be cute with Fungal Infection. Fungal Infection does eat Lava Runner, which is nice. Oh, green was not what I was expecting to follow up a Lava Runner. Well, there's no way I'm blocking, so you don't have to do anything pre-combat if you don't want to, my friend. And a land of war elves. Oh, I'm gonna fungal infection that thing right away. And I guess I will play my land first, just in case something weird happens. But bzz, get that out of here. Uh, might as well attack for one. My opponent hasn't pressured me enough that I don't need to do that yet. I'm not going to use Adamant Will to take down a G2 Lava Runner. And now we definitely just want to draw land, considering we have two really good 5-drops in our hand. <laughs> Journey Mage. A decent one. do like that card. Get in for one. All right. So my opponent's green, red with some wizard synergy going on. All right, that's a good draw. Uh, still think I'm probably swinging with the disciple here. Um. Yeah, Disciple's not going to be blocking this turn. I might try to Adamant Will to get rid of this Journey Mage. We'll see. Opponent's in red-green, though, so I uh, feel like I could get two for one pretty easily there. Might also just take four, I suppose. Oh, yes, do things pre-combat. Oh, another Land of War Elves. All right. You have Elves for days. Yeah, let's try it out. 
Do I want to use a removal spell on a sapperling? That's fine. If not, I get to just eat their dude. Cool. So I trade an adamant will for their three drop, which is nice. And I drew the land, which is super nice. So I'm just going to play Sarah Angel here. Arvad is fine. I guess Arvad pumps up the Sarah Disciple. Now let's just... Oh, Sarah Angel does more damage, though. I have Soul Salvage, which makes this great. I can just run things out, I think, pretty freely against a red-green deck. I just think Sarah Angel's probably more likely to get in there. So let's go ahead and attack with both of our creatures this turn, play Sarah Angel, and pass. Opponent did miss a land drop, but they have a land of war elf, so they're fine. Alright. Sarah Angel is just the most likely creature to be able to swing through whatever my opponent plays next turn, barring like a mammoth spider or something like that. And they use removal, they use removal, but again, red green doesn't have access to that much removal that deals with 4 4, kick, shiv, and fire, um, fiery intervention, stuff like that. Green just has basically nothing but ancient animus. Uh, what was that? A radi Was that a radiating lightning? It was a radiating lightning. All right. So they swept my dudes, and that's it. Why not attack with the lava runner there? I can't. Oh no, never mind. It only dealt one damage to this. All right. I don't hate the radiating lightning. It is an instant though. They probably could have waited on that. I guess they saw an adamant will, so maybe not. We're going to play land Arvad here. Playing the land out because I have the soul salvage. Which means there's probably a turn where I'm going to want to soul salvage something and also replay a creature I get with soul salvage. Opponent probably doesn't have to play around fungal infection anyway because any opponent probably would have just killed that land of war elves right away if I had it. We'll see, though. We'll see. This is an interesting choice. Oh, I take another two. Can't attack me, though. Ooh, hoo -hoo, Helm of the Host, huh? So, I'm going to get my Arvad uh, beat in here. Hopefully they just trade here. That way I'm not under any pressure of dying. And then Helm of the Host on Sarah Angel does kill them next turn if they don't do anything about the Angel or the Helm. Because they're going to go down to 8 this turn. Potentially lower. I can't imagine they're not going to take this block, but maybe they don't. And then if I make a second... No, they're going to take it. Huh. Fine by me. Alright, now they have to put a Flyer on board or kill Helm or kill Sarah Angel. Those are their options. If they kill Sarah Angel, I don't mind putting Helm of the Host on Arvad either. Let's see what they got, though. They are up a land now. Bizarre deck I'm seeing from the opponent here. Green, red, just stuff so far. Wizards? Not, not really. Looks like, ooh, Fire Fist Adept. That's going to deal 3 damage. So they are just dead then. They're going to kill Arvad, but I'm going to get to equip Sarah Angel and just attack him for 8 in the air. Which, I'll take it. I guess they can't even attack here, never mind. Do got to watch out for this one. This one's good. A lot better than it looks. You usually have at least 1 or 2 wizards on board. Yeah, they see it. So, against red-green. Yeah, and I'm just liking Divest more than Juggernaut. Another reason to cut Juggernaut, which is kind of a, a small reason here, is that um, they're going to bring in anything they have against Helm of the Host since they saw it, and that's going to also incidentally kill Juggernaut. Uh, Heal and Grace against Radiate and Lightning. Heal and Grace, I guess when you have double Adamant Will, you don't need it. Um, Dub could be okay as well. Demonic Vigor could be okay. I I'm not going to bring any of these cards in. I guess the Sarah Disciples look a lot worse against someone who's main decking Radiating Lightning, though. 
I don't care about the fungal. I mean, I actually still actively want the fungal infection, if you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, anyway. Yeah, I think I'm going to try it out over a Sarah Disciple. That might be wrong. It's probably wrong, but I'm going to do it. All right, let's see how our open in hand is. We've been fortunate enough to keep two land open in hands a lot and also just draw into our lands. Um, this looks good with the fungal infection, so hopefully they just go land of war elves here. I can go pop. No. Oh, they didn't even play a one drop. We saw tons of one drops from them. They didn't play any of them. On the other white there is good. I imagine Baird's probably decent against this opponent. Red, green. Oh, they just drew the forest or the elf. Value. Get him. And it's a foil elf. I should get a foil sapperling for that. Nice. Alright, I get to, at the very minimum, cast Joust and Lance here, so I get... To add to the board a marginal amount and still get in damage. Alright, we've got a journey mage. So I could just suit up the sapling and attack, but then I'm trading three for three. I'd rather just get the Thalid down. Well, Arved's nice, but if I draw a fourth land, and if, if I just rattle off lands, go Baird, Arved, that's very good. As it is, I'm fine playing Thalid and just making all the trades I possibly can to power up my Soul Salvage. If they attack, I'm snapping off a block with Deathbloom Thalid. And they're doing something pre-combat. Ooh, another journey mage. I, I get it. I get the joke. Probably not attacking. Ah, you are attacking. What does that mean? One reason to take these blocks, too, is not only do I get the Papperling, but them having less... Q, uh, wizards on board also powers down their fire fifth adept if they have one. All right, we did not get so lucky that time, but I am going to just play Danatha here. And next turn, if they just play a creature or something, probably just equip Danatha and attack. <laughs> like, they could have a fire fist adept here. It would just kill Danatha, which would be unfortunate, but not the worst thing in the world. Again, I have action going on for a quite a while here. Even if I brick on land, Soul Salvage means I'm going to be able to just recast my three drops for at least two to three turns. Ooh, Radiating Lightning, sweet. I think it's going to be that sweet, though. Can't attack me. Oh, do you know this as first strike? Oh, man, if they have the thing that gives plus one, plus one, I'm going to block. If they have it, they have it. It's not that big of a deal. The thing has first strike. That doesn't do what you want it to. And the Radiating Lightning was good there, but... Um, both those Sapperlings were free. First Strike, I reads like why a Muppet. Uh, okay. Um, I'm sorry, I don't understand, but... <laughs> Um, I do think it's important to just build out the board here, so I'm actually just going to attack for two instead of getting super greedy and getting in four, since I'm pretty far ahead here. I don't think my deck's too shabby against my opponent here. Also, like, if I draw a land, this game's basically over, because these are both legendaries. They're going to get plus two, plus two from Arvad. We'll, we'll see. I, I hate just saying, like, oh, this game's over, but yeah, this game's pretty over. Not, not really, but yes. Ooh, I just had nothing there. And a Sapril? I haven't seen a single Sapriling. What a weird... My opponent has such a strange deck. It's kind of weird because I'm seeing all the same cards. Man, they are really in on those Journey Mages, though. 
All right, so now we can even equip play Thalid. They can't profitably block any of my creatures. And I have Soul Salvage to back this game up. I think we got it. I think we finally hit the third trophy. And we did. Let's go. Let's go. Black White gets me another trophy. So, yeah, that was sweet. Especially that last game. Kind of went off there against an opponent who had a really strange deck. But we also took down the mirror match and whatever it was we played in match two. Oh, I guess the Black Green not Sapperling's deck. But you see the power of a couple cards here. Helm of the Host, uh, Thalid Omnivore. Arvad, you really get to see how strong they are. And uh, the one thing I'm glad I did in the draft was pick up Eviscerate over, um, Vi uh, what is it, the uh, Yawgmoth's Vile Offering, but we can talk about that another time. At any rate, um, I'm Timothy with Mana Rocks. I appreciate you guys watching as always, and sorry for the really late content, but please let me know how the microphone sounds, um, or rather the computer's microphone, before I get an actual microphone, and I will take your feedback into consideration. So, like, comment, subscribe. See you next time for more Dominaria. Thanks for joining me.